Why is that uh, the, the issue is technology has to be the solution to a problem? And in other places, people were able to define the problem, but in education, we haven't. We haven't allowed to redefine the problem. This uh, came from this uh, Aesop's Fables. You remember that? This uh, the thirst to crawl? That's my question is when does a pebble become technology? You know, the pebbles lies over there. Until the crawl found a, a problem the pebble can help solve. That is dropping the pebbles and raise the water level, and it or he, she can drink the water from the non-naked bottle. Then it transformed an object into a piece of technology. So the key is technology has to be solution and a problem. But very often when we bought something, we bought computers, we bought internet in our schools, but we never found the problem to solve. In essence, it became the problem to which we have found a solution. So we, we cannot really call it technology because it did not solve a problem. It's impossible for you to truly revolutionize and redefine how computers can be used. It's, 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 so at best you can use, that's why you know in the US, the, in the UK too, and other places, the most popular technology for teachers being PowerPoint and not smart boards. Because they don't change anything. You know, you just go, look fun, fancy, nice, right? It's the same thing. But not other users. It's the computers, not by students. And what High Tech High is doing is not being copied in other places. It's a tool for the students to construct, to inquire, to build, to connect, and to communicate. It's a tool for the students. It's a helper to them as a productive tool. So that's what I call it. It's, if you're in a classroom, simply it's called the rain, a war between these people. You have a, 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 a bored kid anyway. In most schools, children are bored in the middle, right? Then we have all this agency, agents, teachers, computers, books, blackboards, those are what I call species. They're all competing for the attention of one student. Of course, you know, teachers dominate. So all of the others are not used to its full extent. And also what we call ideal technology environment. You know about biodiversity, and I'm from Michigan, we got the five lakes, we study uh, the lake, and here you have the Mission Bay too as well. It's biodiverse versus technology diversity. In schools, when we think about technology, we have been thinking about standardization. This is something very strange about schools. Schools have been, is amazingly standardized. That is, when we buy computers, we talk about computer-student ratio. We talk about one child, you know, five children, one computer. And when we talk about computer, we talk about a desktop or a laptop. We don't think about different settings. We don't think about how they can be used. So in a classroom, for example, sometimes you need 10 kids to one computer. Sometimes every one child needs a computer. Sometimes they need a desktop. Sometimes they need a PDA. Sometimes they don't need any technology. So it's about diversity in schools, which we have not supplied. Now, the, the first thing is that, another thing is a, a good, interesting example about jet engines <laughs> and uh, horse wagons. It's, uh, it's basically a transformation. What happens to it if you try to hook a horse, a jet engine to a horse wagon? Uh, Two things could happen. You know, one is that if you turn it off, right, that means the horse wagon goes at its own speed. Uh, that's uh, that's traditional, right? You don't change. You basically constrain the power of the of the jet engine. Or another thing could happen if you turn on jet engine. If it goes fast, you break the horse wagon, right? So that's called transformation. But now suddenly, when the children have access to more information, more varied sources of information, that's a jet engine. It transforms, so you ha have to control it. That's what I call the system thinking. You know, I want to show you this. You know what this, this thing is, this uh, zebra mussels and rabbits? We don't have any from Australia, right? When they brought rabbits over there, in a few rabbits was found, but when you have too many of them, what do you do? You transform the whole ecosystem. Zebra mussels in Michigan, the same thing. We have five Greek lakes, they brought a few, change the whole thing. That is the 
transformation of technology. We had a few cars, Ford built this thing, but now we have too many cars. What are you going to do? The whole system needs to go to adapt to change that. I know I'm running out of time, but I have to show you some of the other things, which is the point that what kind of transformation are we facing uh, uh, today that we need to accommodate? So with so many network multimedia devices, we're seeing major transformations right in two areas. Number one is that in schools, we need to transform our schools from places that are organized by classrooms into global enterprises. That's to support democracy of learning, the personalization of learning. Now, that's basic idea is that traditionally, and even today, we think our schools as confined to a local building, to the physical building we have, how many teachers we have, how many we hire. But you know with the technology, a very simple thing is that you can expand that. You can make that possible. For example, if you have students here at High Tech High who wants to learn about Chinese art, you don't need to hire a Chinese teacher, art teacher from here, online. That can happen. That, that's possible. Actually, right now at Michigan State University, I'm offering uh, Chinese language courses to students in five different states and three different countries. And they're as effective, if not more effective, than human teachers. For more information, visit hitechhigh.org.